Um, so I'm keen to understand more about it from a macro level. And then secondly, on a more macro level, what are the projects that are, as Richard said, actually doing unique things in the space? What are the, the future leaders in the space? And how do we look to allocate capital in an environment that's potentially has projects that are lower market cap than what we <coughs> would be look, looking to allocate to in Spectrum and um, potentially more illiquid? So how do we go about managing those type of um, factors as well? And then, yeah, over to you, Nathaniel, to give us the answers. <laughs> you mean a direction to the answers? <laughs> cool, let's start. Uh, so let's let's uh, try to retouch on Metaverse. So one of the things is when you were, I was watching the Mark Zuckerberg uh, keynote on the Metaverse, uh, and the most important thing that he said is the way we are consuming data. So this is the metrics. I think everybody's old enough to have watched the metrics. If you haven't, oh my God, where did you grow up? <laughs> So in the metrics, everybody remembers. So you have like those guys who are sitting behind the screen, looking at the data, looking at the pictures, the images and everything. And then you get like the other guys who are just like diving deep inside, experiencing the metrics. So this is a way of comparing current tech to the metaverse in terms not of, not as technology itself, but more as experience. So right now, everything we're experiencing is, is in, in, uh, behind the screen. So I'm looking at, at you guys in a, like a 15 inch screen and that's it. I can't touch you. I can't really like, um, like interact the same way I would. If we were in the metrics, like we could be like playing Kung Fu. I could be like punching Richard in the stomach because I don't like what he said about Luna. But this Richard is- Richard doesn't want you to touch him, <laughs> <laughs> Oh, if we're in the metaverse, I'm going to touch him. But yeah, <laughs> this, this is, this is, this is my way of describing what the metaverse is compared to what the current technology is, so metrics. So beyond just like going inside the metrics, uh, part of what makes the metaverse the metaverse, it's the interconnectivity and the, I would call it the multitude of realms which are connected together. So tomorrow you could have, let's say, uh, as an example, the Roblox realm where everything is like it's bricks and block. But this is not appealing to me because I like uh, Dungeons and Dragons. So there is another realm, which is like a Dungeon and Dragons realm. Richard on the other side, he likes spaceships. So he's in Star Atlas and flying and mining planets and traveling left and right and having his alien girlfriends over. And then as you could have like, for example, um, Graham playing with his daughter and, and he takes her to the My Little Pony world. And all these realms would be connected together and this is where blockchain really comes into play because uh, what I've been talking about uh, two weeks ago about blockchain bridges, it's an actual bridge which can not, long, not only be used to, to, to be moving digital assets, but also um, digital assets in the center of the currency, but like NFTs, like swords. I mean, if I was like in my Star Atlas universe, I wanted to take my ship inside, let's call it the, the Lunaverse, where we have an office and we're connecting our meeting there, I could take my starship there, or I could take uh, my sword from the fantasy world and go use it in, in, in another world. So interconnectivity is very important because there is no single universe where everything will be in it. It's, it's a series of realms that can be connected. Um, the next thing is, what's the difference between the metaverse and a game? So the, the main difference is, there's a lot of emphasis on digital ownership. So in the metaverse, because the underlying, let's call it um, digital ownership structure would be blockchain based, you'll be owning a lot of things. For example, I would be owning my avatar. I would be owning the items in the game. I would be owning part of a digital space that's called an office. And compared with a game, which is more like a centralized uh, system, and which is not interoperable and which is not uh, sensor resistant because in a game, if you should all start doing whatever you want, like using like not safe forward pictures, like bad words, they're going to block you, they're going to ban you, they're going to kick you out. And in a game, if you're playing, for example, uh, Starcraft, you can't just take your spaceship and move them into my little tiny world. You know, it, it's not interoperable. So this is my way of framing um, the difference between what makes the metaverse a metaverse. So, <clears throat> sorry, just to clarify, are you saying that the metaverse is not censorship resistant? 
it would be a lot more difficult to, for it to be censorship uh, to be censorable because you have this transferability so i could be creating something and then i'm moving into another universe let's call it like the the facebook world is is is, sen is censored for for whatever topics you want to do so i could take all my stuff that i have on facebook and move into like a free country world where i could be voicing you know uh anything that i want mm -hmm. so this is uh because you have many worlds and the thing is those worlds they can be interconnected and there is no such thing as um what i would call uh, a guardian or like a toll bridge master who can say who can be connected and who cannot be connected because if you're building a metaverse it's connected to let's call it polygon and then i build another metaverse which has absolutely no moderation and it's still connected to, to polygon so i could take all my stuff from that uh, censored metaverse, uh, censored realm of a metaverse, and take it to the other one if I don't like this, the first one. So this is where interoperability and uh, makes a big difference. No. Okay. Cool. Yeah. So straight into the investment thesis. Okay. So investing in the metaverse is 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 more complex than just saying like looking for something that's called meta and buying it. So the first investment thesis, which is let's call it a wider scope investment uh, thesis, is long blockchain platform. So we know blockchain will be powering the thing. I mean, the, 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 the keynote made it very clear, uh, interoperability, transfer, digital ownership, this is all blockchain. There's, there's nothing else right now that can come and just uproot it. So there's two ways of going around it. Either we go long mainstream blockchain, for example, like uh, Avax, Luna, Matic, Sol, Solana, BNB. And you see there, I put Luna in there. <laughs> I knew it was coming. Um, mm -hmm. You could go along with blockchains because they, they might be where the most of the realms and the games and the protocols of metaverse would be built. That's a normal long uh, investment uh, strategy. The other one is you, change, you, you go into more specific. You take the view that the metaverse will be built on not general all-purpose smart contract blockchain uh, that we're using right now for everything, but specialist blockchain. And in this case, I've added Engine, Send, Flow, Axis, and Gala Games. And the reason why I have Axis and Gala Game is because both of them are actually use, building a sidechain, um, a roll-up on Ethereum to be able to do their own thing. So they're, they're, they're indirectly building a gaming chain. They started as games, but they're actually moving into gaming chain. And if you see the transaction that's happening on Ronin, it's, it's amazing. And I would not be surprised if tomorrow, I mean, there's about $6 billion of assets being locked on Ronin. That's, that's quite a lot. So I wouldn't be surprised tomorrow if Axie open up their, their chain to be like a, a gaming platform chain where other people can build and leverage on um, their user base because we have quite a lot of user base who are already on Ronin. And a lot of us user base they wouldn't have an Ethereum or MetaMask wallet because it's too expensive. They wouldn't be using Solana because you require a desktop or it's too complicated. They wouldn't be using Avalanche, but they just have Ronin. So imagine if you have 750,000 people on a plate you own um, Realm already in Ronin, and then you're, you're telling other people, come build your games on my chain. So these are two ways of attacking it. You could just like try to target specific project or just like scatter shot and just, you know, take a peek at everything to have a diversity of portfolio. Uh, second is we go deeper down the rabbit hole. So the first one was more of a general strategy, trying to get some exposure without trying to pick what could, uh, winners and losers. But in this one, the second strategy, you go long realms. So you know, you already assume that the metaverse will be successful. You know it will be built, built on blockchains. but you are picking spe specific universes that will be successful because you think that right now the big champions have already been created. So you could be buying Axie Infinity, which is basically Pokemon on a blockchain, uh, decentralized, decentralized, which is like Second Life, Illuvium, which is kind of a fantasy world. My neighbor Alice is basically like farming game, Star Atlas Space Exploration. Then you have Mobox, Wider Worlds, Alien Worlds. So it's all up if you have right now the conviction that one of them 
or a few of those projects are so big or are having so much momentum that they will be part of a metaverse, no matter whether it's built on Facebook left or right, but they will be part of a metaverse. So this is like a, a higher beta play compared with the first uh, investment thesis. Okay, so just mm -hmm. uh, a quick view. So this is Axie. As you can see, Pokemon, very funky. It's being made for mobile. Uh, this one is Decentraland. Uh, this one is Illuvium. I, I really like the graphics. Mm. Uh, this one is My Neighbor Alice. So it's kind of like more of a kiddie game, like a harvest moon, kind of go and plant tomatoes. Uh, you could actually go out of your house and do it, but somehow people prefer to do it in a virtual world. <laughs> yeah. uh, Star Atlas. So I'm saving money to buy that spaceship. <laughs> but we'll see. Um, cool. Now let's go even deeper. So if we have like deeper convictions on, on specific, um, uh, on the metaverse, okay, and even deeper, deeper um, trade would be long on digital assets, so NFTs. So while we're not really touching that right now for Spectrum, this is something we need to consider. Because let's say you've already selected, okay, I think Star Atlas will win, okay? I don't care what everybody thinks. In five years, this will be the default um, uh, sci-fi space realm of a metaverse, okay? So going long on Atlas could make you quite a lot of money. But if you were actually to buy the digital assets, for example, I'm buying uh, among the first spaceships that were created in the universe. So they have some kind of vintage value. Well, not now, but in five to 10 years, holding a ship that was created 10 years ago, is like holding a, right now a crypto punk. So this is like an even longer uh, time frame trade. But then the return of a crypto punk right now is like 500, uh, 50, 000, 50, 000 times. So the same spaceship could be yielding a thousand or 50,000 reward. But of course, this is a very, very uh, aggressive trade. You could also be, um, if you don't want to touch gaming and all the too much digital stuff, and you want to be, be like um, softer, and you, you're more like a very social media person, then you could go for social trophies. I mean, we have like a Twitter, which is like um, uh, developing NFT integration where you can associate your NFT with your profile pic. And this is already happening in Discord. Uh, this is going to happen very soon in Facebook. So if you're buying NFTs right now, especially the one which has like some kind of special value and strong community, so you could be buying like uh, social trophies. And with time, the social trophies gain more money, uh, gain more value. So this is another trade. Now, the last uh, but not least of a trade is long alternates. So we've heard about um, like uh, realms, uh, blockchains, realms, digital assets. So now you have like other kinds of services which are popping around the metaverse. And they're not necessarily the most straightforward trade because you don't really think of them as the first thing to do when people are saying buy meta. So one of the things you could do is, for example, art galleries. So you have like two art galleries that I know of and, and uh, I, I think they could work. I mean, it's a very long shot. So you have like Kalao, okay, which is doing like a VR type museum and Vinci, which is doing a, another type of, uh, of artist uh, art selling stuff. So these are alternate trades because eventually if digital assets, of course, I'm talking about NFTs, digital collectibles do become very popular and do they do become mainstream and they become part of history they become part of meta history, then art galleries, okay, stand to win as well because this is where all those collectibles will be traded and bought and listed and displayed. Alternatively, if you're more of a, let's call it pragmatic person and you don't think everybody would just strap on the VR set and jump into the metaverse, you could go for something which is softer. For example, like social media platforms which are could be the gateway entry for a lot of people into the metaverse. So you have like two projects that I like. So the first one is called Like. So it's kind of, um, uh, first one Like is, <laughs> I'm trying to find a polite word, <laughs> but let's call it a, a fan platform where entertainers and influencers can issue NFTs. So basically you could be buying pictures of Kylie Jenner and, and what's the other guy's name? I forgot the husband. No, it's not even Kylie Jenner. Kim Kardashian and Kanye West. So you could be buying like 
a digital autograph of Kanye West uh, and, and Kim Kardashian. So like, like uh, using the like platform. Grape is actually uh, a tool on Solana that helps you um, use NFTs as some kind of, um, let's call it mechanism to get into verified chat. There's also another project that I haven't listed. It's on Ethereum. It's Get Protocol. It's uh, quite an old project and they specialize in selling uh, NFTs as tickets uh, to prevent scalping so that sometimes you have a big event, you're selling tickets. So whenever people resell those tickets, they can get like a royalty fee. Okay. So that's it. So I tried to make it a bit short so we can actually dive into the discussion. Cool. Cool. So that's giving me a much better picture of what's happening. Um, what is, we know what Facebook's ambitions are in this space. So would, would, could you draw a parallel between like Libra and, and Meta or whatever their ambitions are? So we, it, when you kind of sp spoke about censorship that Jamai has picked up, I was like, there's no way Facebook is going to allow a, a, a censorless um, Metaverse, I think, for users to play on. So is it, is, and then when you spoke about like, there's not going to be any one Metaverse or one framework maybe that's the case it's just hard for me to kind of conceptualize it so is it not an alternative argument where there's almost like like one you can't formulate my question yeah i mean you're trying to ask me why would facebook not build their own goddamn kingdom with a wall and own everything yeah, yeah. I mean, that, that, that argument but again between decentralized and and not decentralized or, yeah, well decentralized the thing is, Facebook is dying. So if you don't know, if you haven't followed like on the equity side, so their activity rate, their subscription rate, so they are, they are aging, they are dying. So they are not doing as well as we, as we, as we, as, as we, they should be doing. I mean, they do still have like Instagram, like still here, but the thing is, um, the new generation is always looking towards something new. And what we are trying to do is extend an olive branch instead of trying to own everything. So they're saying, you know what, I'm going to own like one world, the biggest one, and everybody's welcome to connect with it. So, and I think Mark Zuckerberg made it very clear, but Facebook will not be the metaverse. Facebook will just be starting the metaverse and everyone, all the realms will be welcome to join. And he's kind of like saying, you know, everybody just jump into the bandwagon. Because if tomorrow, because it's a, it's a case of like Apple versus Android. So if to, tomorrow, let's call it, he closes his metaverse and it's only Facebook people, okay? And then you have like Google decides to spin off another metaverse, but this one is like Android is open. Then eventually what's going to happen is the same thing that happened uh, between Apple and Android. So even though uh, uh, Apple did get a head start, on the longer term, Android is, is slowly eating them away because people kind of value this ability to move between different things to be able to customize. And I think this is, uh, it's kind of the open source mentality. And this is what um, Mark Zuckerberg had decided to, to, to bring forward as the base platform of his metaverse. Yeah, cool. Okay, cool. So, so I've got a couple of questions. Is the those those gaming um, platforms like Axies and um, Decentraland and uh, Star Atlas, how what is the relationship between the the token um, and the token price to the gameplay? So yeah, I know you've spoken about Axies and mining and X million and they're paying fees. Can mm -hmm. you just talk high level around why oh. each of them pay a dividend or why the price should go up if they are successful? So you can either own the asset and, and kind of have capital gains on buying a starship, or you can own the token Illuvium or, or Mana or whatever it is. And yeah. uh, because you know the price will go up if the popularity goes up. How is the popularity and the success of this game linked to the price of the token going up? Um, okay, there's two things. There's the NFT and the token. <clears throat> For the NFT, I actually responded to um, Gavin on the chat and here, because like, Gavin was asking about... Um, Valuation, yeah. Valuation. So, uh, in terms of tokens, okay. yeah. So, in terms of tokens, there's three kinds of token that are, are being issued. 
So you have a first one, which is like an equity token. The other one, which is a governance token, and the third one, which is like an in-game currency. So cool. when we're talking about the equities token, what happens is, let's call it uh, in the case of Axie. So every time that you breed a new Axie or create a new Pokemon, you pay like, I think, $10 of extra ETH as a fee. And mm. this goes towards the Axie DAO, which is like kind of a treasury for the whole platform. And those 10, the $10 of ETH that went into the treasury, they can be either used to distribute or pay, uh, pay something to all the AXS holders, uh, the token holders, or they could be used to buy back and burn those tokens, which is the same thing that the stock market has been doing for the past uh, 10 years. So all the companies have extra cash. Instead of paying a dividend, they just buy back the stock, uh, the stock from, the, from the open market, and then they, they, put it, they, they destroy it so that it creates scarcity and inflate the price. So this is the first reason why the tokens might go up, because they have like a buyback system in, uh, input uh, inside the, the structure. Uh, the second one is uh, governance. So a lot of those tokens are also having an element of governance where tomorrow you could, if you have like, let's call it a, a 5% of a token, you could put something to vote. For example, I want all Axie to be blue. And then you could be running your own campaign. And if tomorrow you get like in a vote, then the game would be forced to convert all the Axies to blue. So compared with me holding my, my, my Tesla shares and, and, and Elon, Elon Musk on giving, giving, giving a rat's ass about what I, I'm saying, so this is giving people um, the ability from their phone to vote and submit resolutions for the project. So you're inviting the community to be able to act, uh, to decide on the direction of a project compared with, let's call it a, a normal listed company on Wall Street. So who is this, who's making the decision? It's the directors, which are voted by the majority shareholders. So technically the small, the small shareholders who own like fractions uh, of percentage of a company, they can't say anything. But in the DAO case, even if you own one token, you can have a voice, you can put some, some, uh, some uh, motions forward and you can be listened to. So this is a second reason why those tokens can have value because you can, you, you can have a say and people are paying to have a say. And the third one is some of the tokens behave like in-game currency. So using the same uh, principle as BTC, so if you have a fixed supply of coins or digital assets, and then the economy around those assets grow, then the value of those assets grow. So it can be uh, like actual uh, digital silver. So these are the three reasons why those tokens in specific would gain value. Back onto the second question of why the NFT would gain value is that if tomorrow I have this 1,000 spaceship on the market, I buy uh, 100 or 10 of them. Uh, tomorrow, there's a, a, million, a, a million players. So out of those million players, let's call it uh, 10,000, we say, you know, I need to get that spaceship to prove that I am in the club. So they will be willing to fork money. But if tomorrow that 1 million player shifts to 300 million players, you know, then there'd be like 300 times more people trying to bid and get that rare spaceship to prove that, you know, they belong to the club. It's all about the, it's the same reason why people buy like Rolex watches. Cool. Okay. Okay, cool. So awesome. Well, nice summary. Um, so, so picking on the first of your three um, possibilities for the token price going up, is all of that information transparent? The first being the um, behaving like an equity. So there's an intrinsic value for the HP bulletin in theory because of their forward cash flow. And that's why the equity should be worth X, you know, whether it's Sound or not yeah. story. What are the what are the various levers or knobs that that determine in theory the intrinsic value of a uh, Axie Infinity token for for your class A there or the Alluvium or the Atlas? Is that um, easy to see? Um, yeah, Is, I think token terminal gives you because they're calculating on chain how much money that protocol is generating, and Axie yeah, Infinity yeah. is, is generating quite a lot of money. And, and that's just from a uh, minting of new axes, right? Yeah. Well, well, they do have like over revenue lines, yes. uh, but I'm not out with the main one is minting of new axe. So they made like $193 million, uh, okay, over a period of 30 days, which is quite a lot. That's a lot. Yeah. So, I mean, this is, inc this is incredibly close to the traditional stock market, really. I mean, you, you can, but more transparent. 
yeah, it's more transparent because you can actually uh, measure the <laughs> the live earnings of of any protocol. I mean, you can I can know exactly how much any of those protocols are making that right now because all the deal and everything is transparent. You know. Yeah, that's so that's Axie, even DYDX, OpenSea, Pancake Swap, all of them are transparent. So you can. This is this is um, an approach to valuation, which is very um, traditional finance like, which is yeah. like price earning multiples. Yes. Okay. Um, and is there a clear relationship between the revenue generated by that that game and the amount they pay out? Is that documented somewhere? Is it part of the smart contract? So they can either buy and burn, like you said, like a buyback, yeah. or they can distribute like a dividend. Um, uh, actually, it's more complicated than that. I, I simplified it, but essentially, all the money goes into a treasury, and the treasury use is put to a vote. So okay. it could be going to go buy back and burn. Cool. But one of the um, let's call it less common because I've se I've seen like three in my life, in my life in crypto, it's acquisition. So there was I forgot the name, but acquisitions have actually started. So tomorrow, if let's call it Axie had like a Two hundred million dollar war chest, okay? Or well, actually, it's, it's ridiculous. I mean, one even probably had like one bi uh, one. Uh, okay, let me count this. Okay, one billion dollar war chest, and they want to say like, um, I want to buy Alice. So put it to vote, and then Axie acquires Alice. <laughs> so this is something else which is actually uh, coming into play, like uh, crypto corporate rating. I mean. I think we're still well ahead. I mean, I've seen like two or three happen, but it's not yet popular. But as those watches get bigger, it's going to be more than just burning token because tomorrow somebody would actually would say, you know what, um, we're going to buy Alice and then rip them off BSC and dump them onto the running chain. So this is um, this is something else. Like I say, the, the treasure reflection is a bit like the treasure of a company. Except that uh, it's a community which is kind of like deciding where it's going, and and a lot of things could happen. Well, okay, so 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 that's awesome. So now my next question is, if I was going to buy into Tesla or BHP or whatever it is, mm -hmm. um, I'd want to believe in the director team, the the team yeah. running the company. I mean, I'd back the jockey. Is there a way to see who the highest Axie holders are? Who are the people that are going to be making these decisions? Who are, are they faceless, nameless people? Is it the dev team? Because you're putting your trust, even though you've got one of a billion votes, or even if you've got one vote, it's one in a billion, you're not necessarily going to sway. So can you see who's going to be um, influencing those kind of decisions, barbacks or dividends or acquisitions or mergers? You're asking me because we're being recorded. <laughs> but yeah. No, um, no. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. So uh, let me check the AXS, uh, AXS token. <laughs> put it put it on pause and then. <laughs> yeah. So uh, here's in terms of holders where the concentration is 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 built. So uh, most of it is being located inside the token swap X, uh, access bridge and multi sig. So multi sig is is uh, basically the dev. So I'd have to go one layer below and go inside the running bridge. But uh, as you can see, most of the tokens are. Or inside the token swap and running bridge, which means that they are held by the community. It's only like a very small amount. I mean, you still have some guy on pre-sale Binance. You see the amount on Binance, and it's still quite small. It's like almost a half a percent. Um, but it'd be very difficult to put um, a mm -hmm. face behind those numbers because some of the early adopters are holding like uh, like the Shiba guy, like five billion dollars worth of it yeah but by the end of the day don't forget all of them if you're not motivated by some kind of inspirational desire to build something you're motivated by money so they would tend to sway towards whichever uh decision creates the most value for the chain you know i'm pretty sure if tomorrow with my one axi i put a motion to 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 give all the money away to charity i mean i get like 99.999 percent people like give me giving me thumbs down cool yeah. Yeah. Um, um, and and the, the the gameplay. So let's talk about Axie. So I haven't actually created profiles or tried any of these, but I'm, it's a hell of interesting. So Axie is yeah. that running on a blockchain, or is it just the 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 currency is on a blockchain? Like, 
or is this a, is this a, on a centralized is the axi serve is there an axi amazon server running this all and then just the currency and the the, the, the players are on blockchains or is this whole thing running on a no, no, no. I, we, I mean, this, this thing cannot run on blockchain. The amount of, 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 of server power you'd require to do that, you probably like uh, burn the GDP of Solana US in one day. Amazing, right? Solana can do anything. Uh, I don't know. No. Computing power is, is, is different, even like running like big database. I know that all the key transactions are being run over blockchain. So, for example, oh. like logging in, yes. uh, you require like a wallet to sign on. Uh, yes. Battling, once you complete a battle, so you sign something to get the to get the reward when you're yeah. consuming things you sign um so most of the let's call it um specific transaction that creates a permanent change in your yeah. gamer settings or gamer gamer account yeah. these run off the blockchain but all the graphics all the all the rest of the stuff or even centralized server or yeah. it's running in a, a vm on, on your mobile phone okay cool so i guess where i was where I was trying to, what I was trying to figure out is the voting. Um, it, it's not all in a smart contract. So you, we, it, all the holders of axes need to vote, and there's some outcome which is 90% of people say donated to SBCA. No. Um, that's not necessarily going to happen because you've still got a dev team behind this that could decide no stuff. You're going to rug pull. So it's it's not. Um, no, not actually. <laughs> You know, the, the, the submissions happen on a, on an independent platform. So most of the uh, governance or are, are happening on an independent platform where anyone can put it forward. So voting on DAO and let's call it um, uh, let's call it a community directions. They don't happen inside the game. <clears throat> they happen on a third party website or the third party system that hosts voting uh, voting stuff for for people. I, I forgot the name of a website, but all of those protocols are using it. Okay. So it's only the, 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 the gaming engine, the sprites, the basic stuff, the apps that are running on Amazon server. The most important things, which is which Axie you have, have you won or lost, yeah. or like voting, they happen on the blockchain. Got it. Okay, cool. Cool. Keen to hear your thoughts, Rich. I'm just picking up uh, bits and pieces of conversations I've had. So there was a, a, a game developer that I spoke to called Ajuna. And I just remember the guy saying that they're gonna, it'll take them three years to, to build out their gaming engine. They're building on Solana and their whole thing was, um, was latency. Um, and I think that he mentioned a number of 300 milliseconds for feasibility and like the, the requirement to make um, gaming decentralized is very, very far out. And I think Infinity and Unreal are the two most common uh, that a lot of these platforms work on. So as an example, the universe that I just spoke to, they've partnered with Unreal and, and, and Nathan's 100% right. Most of the commercial elements are, it's a hybrid of centralized and they're bringing in the best of decentralized to the things that you can use on a decentralized basis, but you certainly can't run a gaming engine decentralized right now. Um, so yeah, um, I think we've got to just be careful about how you position these things as being completely diverse from uh, centralized serving, because it's not. Sure, sure. I mean, there's another aspect. I mean, we have like ICP and you have like storage system, but those are like, I wouldn't put them inside the metaverse play right now because it's, <laughs> it's very tricky to see how they will be able to scale up because right now all they're doing is like basic stuff. But, you know, like he was saying, like, I don't think you can run an Unreal Engine on ICP. I don't think it would work that way. I don't think you would be able to uh, run, like, what is it, uh, Amazon S3, right? On 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 weave. So, yeah, there's, there's a lot to go. Yeah, I, I, I'm going to simplify the approach to investing. Um, once again, it's a speculation. Um, you're buying into a narrative and you know yesterday smooth love potion movement was purely based on the fact that zuckerberg was interviewed and the two products that she mentioned were roblox and axie quite simply 
Yeah. I know that's a flash in the pan. So from a, for a the CIO point of view, that's not very helpful because you're looking for sustainable bets. Um, but doesn't mean you can't trade it. Uh, <clears throat> and and yeah, so I, the technicalities of all these things will will take us a long time. I mean, what Nathan's given us is a very high level view of, of the basic mechanics, but understanding how Star Atlas and Alluvium and these guys are going to use various aspects of real, real world and decentralized world. I don't know. I think there's probably some intellectual property that we'll never know because that might give them an edge uh, as an example. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, thinking about what the what Kieran said from Alluvium, I mean, they pinning everything on Immutable X. Um, so they, they, they're banking on Ethereum mm -hmm. and, and their layer two scaling uh, project or immutable exascaling project to to deal with that aspect of of in-game uh, commerce but it's not there yet um and they're going to launch with something possibly without that in existence so that's why they have these roadmaps and if you look at the roadmaps they are years mm -hmm. they, you know a lot of guys are dropping products early next year um, and they're giving away NFTs very, very strategically in between. So that that's the easy part. Mm -hmm. You know, now you've got to bring a 3D um, version of that NFT into the game. And that's all great. And it belongs in the metaverse. But yeah. Cool. Uh, so I didn't realize, uh, Nathan, you know, I know in-game token and, and DAO-based token, but the equity-based token, I'm trying to think of a project that you could, give an example of that being three different uh, assets underlying. I mean, the AXS token is supposed to be, uh, it's a mixture of both governance and equity because, um, I mean, through the governance, you can actually order um, a buyback. So the reason why I segregated it is because um, if you go on DeFi, uh, there's a lot of tokens that have no governance. They're strictly uh, revenue based. So I think it's easier to separate those three and then merge them together than try to put a single one and try to strip them apart. But those are the three main categories. And as the game gets more and more developed, I mean, I reckon that, I mean, Star Atlas only has two tokens, governance and in-game currency. Yeah. But I'm seeing a lot of DAO in terms of uh, treasury management coming up. And I wouldn't be surprised if, if in the future we see like a tri uh, games issuing triple, triple currencies, you know? One is for voting, but somehow we don't meet the securities rule. Yeah. The other is to get access, but it's it's it depends on the projects. I mean, I'd rather start with free and say, okay, you're using all your, those two, or like those two are combined in one for for this particularly uh, particular project. But yeah, I mean, it's, it's mostly a DeFi thing to have a protocol give money back one way or the other without giving any vote. Cool. So I'm keen to like just get a practical things from an investment point of view, how we could look to implement you know, a game for metaverse um, play uh, is you know, if we wanted to do it tomorrow. So yeah. maybe, yeah, I'm coming in with a very blank slate because this is all very new to me. But um, especially yeah. on, on the Nathaniel Richard side, let's say that we wanted to do put 5% of, of spectrum into these assets. What does that 5% consist of? For you um first of all i would not be using this on our side as game five because we are more sophisticated than just investing on mainstream blockchain platform okay um i'd be looking somewhere between this and this i mean we do have enough extensive uh, knowledge about games to be like taking punts on on specific games to to survive okay but uh for me like um the problem with Flow Engine and Sandbox is they're trying to build the architecture. They're trying to build um, the platform. It's a bit like Cordano. <laughs> they're trying to be the, build the platform on which all the games will be built on. But on the other side, you have like Axie and Gala Games, which started as games and decided to build their own chain out of, the, out of their own internal divan. So for me, Axie is kind of a blue chip of gaming, not because of the best game ever, but because it has the highest uh, revenue line. That means it is profitable, it's making money. It's going to be making its own chain, okay? 
and that means there's ability to release more games or for it to become the winner among all those solution provider. Even though from a technical point of view, it's changed probably the worst one out of everyone because it's basically like a bootstrap um, if I am roll up for the sake of being able to sustain its transaction, but it has the user base. Uh, mm. Same thing with Gala Games. Um, depending on where you want to position yourself, I would rather be going for this and this. Uh, we definitely cannot touch the NFT. It is way out of, uh, of our league. Yeah. Um, we could be having minor position in alternates, okay, which kind of provide a a softer blue, especially I like the part where they're using um, kind of like a social media bridge. The this is also part of the metaverse. Mm -hmm. It's not as sexy as uh, as decentralized or having a virtual home, but the thing is, the majority of the, of people will be starting with using an NFT as a profile pick and using those services before they even start diving and putting this VR headset on. Cool. Your thoughts, Rich? Yeah, I, I think so too. It's got to be specifically in the in the realms and the games themselves that largely represent meta. Um, sentiment changes quickly. It's no doubt that it's a narrative that'll that'll run for a bit, and and then things will change. And I don't know how many more bright shining objects we're going to get because I think what's going to happen, we're just going to keep circling back to uh, other things. So where the DeFi starts to prevail in uh with nft specific DeFi uh, that has that touches gaming in some shape or form and i think the key concepts i think are gonna are gonna be the main things um i can't think of any surprises that are coming um and as, and i think you see i mean nathan touched on you know the rotation back into into tier ones we're already seeing it um and that's and i think that's what it boils down to is let's have some exposure to this rebalancing and just stick to the basics of having a good basket of reasonably liquid um well established with re reasonable market cap and obviously decent venues to trade on um yeah i, I mean the, the list that i gave was was more just exploratory just on some of the other more experimental kind of i mean blocktopia is still very very new um so we don't even know how much development's gone on there but you know, I think there's enough to work with to choose 10 solid plays. You know, although Axie's run, um, does it does it not perform in the bull run just because it's run? Uh, we could have said that about Binance, and we mentioned like Binance is, is just <coughs> continues to move. So we maybe have th different weightings, but I think we need to have some kind of uh, structure to the to the basket that we invest in. You know, my feelings. I've been saying it for quite some time. I think we need some exposure um mm. let's just try and come up with that what that list looks like i think we have i think we have enough to make a decent uh, basket of gaming meta plays yeah cool are, are there any traditional gaming companies i've just been doing some google i mean like google earth by the way would be the bloody best metaverse <laughs> <laughs> yes. um, and the, the articles back from like 2017 then talking about a metaverse, second earth, all that kind of stuff. But then I just came across something, Take Two, I don't know, it's apparently the company that's um, developed or has the franchise Grand Theft Auto. And there's a, there's a 4th of November yesterday, Squawk Fox interview with the CEO of Take Two. He reckons he's the biggest company. Um, we're probably the biggest metaverse company on earth. So that's the traditional company. Are they listed? I don't know, but yeah, that's where I'm going. Is, is there a traditional company that does gaming that would mm. hugely benefit from being in this meta, you know, transitioning or whatever, um, entering the metaverse hop? Will they run? Um, I'll just put the link on our chat now. Uh, I think can, can I just boot, bootstrap well, onto what you're saying then, Nick? Yeah. Because I, I, I was reading a short while ago about um, the guys from EA. So, I mean, FIFA is like one of the biggest games. Yeah. Um, and they've, they've been talking about NFTs and blockchain and metaverse being one of the biggest things that come to the industry. So I suspect no doubt that at some stage they're going to enter, the, enter this. So do they enter it into 
one of the existing uh, gaming blockchains or do they enter into mm. um, one of the other smart contract platforms? And is that not maybe the next big play? Yeah. 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 I mean, is there a reason why tr traditional gaming company would acquire additional players because they go meta? I guess so. If it's on mobile, there are a billion or whatever people with mobile phones, but they could have been playing Grand Theft Auto forever. So just that it's got meta, is it, is it likely to attract more players to their games? If they, if they had a silly NFT add on that your Grand Theft Auto car is now an NFT, are they going to get more players? I, I don't think so. Um, if it were to connect into the other games or other metaverse, you could just import your NFTs into, if you could import an Axie Infinity NFT into Grand Theft Auto, would that make the company that builds Grand Theft Auto's stock price go up? Uh, I don't see the correlations. Well, interoperability surely means you can access more more people. It's like, uh, fine, more fine, fine, yeah, fine. And if you don't participate, if you don't integrate, you kind of get left out in the cold. It might add additional revenue lines for Grand Theft Auto. Can you monetize shit in GTA? I think so. In, inside the game, is there a currency? The last time I it was City, yeah, yeah, I mean, it was ago. Yeah. <laughs> so could, it, could it allow the traditional game, huge player bases already, to generate additional revenue streams in game that they've never had before? They've only ever had the. I'm sure they could. Uh, okay, so that would be a. That would be interesting to follow. Um, my take is um, I was following this uh, Chinese um, girl who covers like uh, a Chinese. Uh, Made, uh, crypto stuff illegally I was to hide in the rock but um, what she was saying is she was talking to a bunch of uh, ga uh, game studios so basically the, the studios that are uh, from the traditional gaming who are going into the metaverse are not the big ones like 10 cents they, they don't care about the metaverse because they're all, already making so much money they don't need to go and share the stuff so it's yeah. a lot of uh, smaller gaming firms who are looking towards that to be uh, making a, a way through. But don't forget, uh, one thing that blockchain gaming introduced that didn't exist before is uh, pay, play, play to earn. Yeah. So Axie is one of the, <laughs> is the only game on earth where playing makes you money. So it's all because of a, of a tokenomics ecosystem and, and using crypto to be able to create stuff. Yeah. So, I mean, this, this could be disruptive. Imagine like a whole generation of gamer coming in and said, I'm going to play your game. How much are you going to pay me for? And this is where things are changing and the reason why the blockchain stuff is, is, is going up. So don't forget about the economics, which is changing as well. It mm -hmm. used to be you had to play to play games. Now games have to pay you to play. I mean, we went from, from, from pay to play to freemium and yeah. then we're going into play to earn. So this is also a big change in terms of, of, of uh, how people are looking at games. Yeah, so I, I, agree. Time. I think I think we're so early on and trying to understand exactly how disruptive it is, is, is impossible because, as you say, Tencent and all these EA, these big brands, mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, Blizzard yeah. and they're just uh, they're massive. Um, but my kind of take on it is, you know, using Zuck as an example, you know, he's got a, a massive war chest now, $10 billion to start. And, and I can imagine that will only increase. <clears throat> so does he sit there independently trying to like capture imagination around Meta or does he go and partner up with um, uh, and Amoka, who's massive into play to earn, an incredible brand out of out of the east. Uh, they invested in the biggest names, uh, Axie being one of them, and um, and just tap into the resource. And instead of having to reinvent the wheel, uh, just use a lot of money to gain access to the right development, understand what's going on, and engage the blockchain community and very cleverly just position himself and use his billions of, of customers. Um, I don't know if it's a, it's a, it's a, it's an arm wrestle one-on-one -on -one that, or if it's going to become this merging of worlds, uh, 
and it meets somewhere in the middle that has elements of traditional and elements of decentralization. And I've always said this, like we've always waited in crypto for the silver bullet that changes the, the, the playing field and it's never ever going to be that. What it's going to be is everyday dApps that are underpinned now by blockchain. It's not, oh, I'm going to move across to this product because it's a blockchain product. No, we want our everyday games and applications and we'll call them dApps because they're decentralized um, to just have the trustless uh, ease of use uh, of a decentralized blockchain. Simple. Um, I don't know what that's going to look like. I don't know how, how Zach, I mean, I asked the guy from Luniverse, I said, how do you see Zach Clay? He said, I don't really care. What I would like him to do is make the hardware easily accessible and globally wholesale it. In other words, he just wants the augmented reality glasses to become, you know, uh, 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 three or four sets lying around in each home. Yeah. Because it benefits him. So maybe it's a, a stupid question, but is the whole metaverse viewed through these goggles? Oh, you should well, watch you some more cartoons. So we will have some brain stuff plug into your brain later on. Yeah, where it's kind of like you put some yeah. headset on and you dream it. Long term. So, so, so definitely uh, there's got to be some kind of a, a projection to, so unless you're looking at it in, in a computer, but if you want an Im immersed experience in an augmented reality, so yeah. I've been gone on the days where you have this motion sickness VR, they've got to be far more intuitive than that because nobody wants to get motion sickness every time they go and shop in Nike virtually, you know. Um, it's got to be augmented and I think so Zuckerberg, you must watch his, his, his YouTube keynotes. It's very, very, very clever. Okay. Uh, and it's fresh because it, I think we've all got preconceptions around what virt a virtual needs to look like. And, and I think it's very different to that. Is um, NVIDIA uh, manufacturing these goggles? They're the chipsets. So, yeah, uh, so, so I was going to say this. Yeah, 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 yeah NVIDIA is from NVIDIA. AMD and NVIDIA yeah, are, are, NVIDIA. are are great bets. I just think that these guys have got proprietary technology yeah. that light years yeah. ahead of any other competition. Um, so I know they can do the graphics card for mining and stuff, but that's for the, but I thought they share price with the. Well, it's it's the, all graphics, great. Right? It's all graphics. The core business is graphics card for computer and gaming. <laughs> well, it used to be learning AI. Uh, that's yeah. that's the the. the um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, Okay, uh, Rich, quick one. The the keynote, I definitely want to watch it. Thanks for that heads up. Is Zuck targeting um, teens and gamers, or is he targeting like businesses and thirty to commerce? No, he, he wants commerce, man. I mean, the whole the whole metaverse. He wants commerce. He wants he wants to be able to just continue transaction with his 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 the the ex Facebook community just to bring relevance to commerce um connecting people i mean it's you'll you'll pick up on all the on all the typical keywords that are dropped into the conversations and it's very facebook reminiscent but um he's cleverly cleverly just pivoting into into current relevance otherwise he's you know as i said and this is his hail mary in my opinion yes and he's never been wrong no he's a genius and i mean if you've got endless uh, endless supply of money and you've got a few billion people uh for the most part, you actually don't care about Facebook like you and I do. We don't sit there and go, I hate Facebook and I'll never do that kind of life. 90% of the users couldn't care less about the emotional detachment from Facebook like you and I. Um, he will just cleverly utilize that and, and build the next 20 years of of their uh, future. Digital slavery. <laughs> but the point is, he's got he's to gotta be seen to be doing something more decentralized. And I think that's going to be the, the key moment here. He's out of favor with Congress. Um, mm -hmm. He got shut down for trying to launch a currency. Everyone else is going to be able to launch a, decent, uh, a centralized currency, but not Facebook. Daren't they give Zuck that permission? Um, <laughs> it's too much power. Like you can have an audience, but you can't have money. Choose, take, choose your... Uh, um, so I'm, I'm just curious. I, but I think it's, for me, with all of these things, it's, it's about... The fact that we've got big institutions stepping into our territory, that's all that matters. Really. It's advocacy. Sure. So, so I mean, I've never been a big gamer, mainly because I've got headaches, which is a problem. <laughs> so I also probably spend a lot more time gaming. I just couldn't stare at the screen for long. So it's all foreign to me, sort of the, um, 
world of Warcraft and the you know these these online servers. I don't know about you guys, and we all in the similar age groups. But were those big for you, gaming? Or are they still? Oh, Nathaniel, I guess yeah, you. Yeah. So, okay, so, so, so I guess where I'm going is GameFi doesn't. I can imagine there are tons of kids all playing games, but I've got no real world. I don't watch the YouTube clips of these arenas. I mean, I've kind of seen them. Six hundred million. million. Six hundred million Minecraft. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Gaming is massive. It's and it's. it's it's out of this. But, it's crazy. But is 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 it, is it a is it a specific demographic like age demographic like up to thirties or up to thirty fives? And is there something? Mm. High, is there like sport bar that could leverage the same benefits? My like my mom's football. like sixty years old. He's she's playing like what's this thing? Candy Crush. So she <laughs> counts inside that demographic. So you have, yeah. so you, you tend to, 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 to think of as game as guys with like giant screen with like with RPGs. shiny cube, but you know, it's, it's, uh, it's your average person mm. on the street. Okay. Candy Crush. I don't think about that. So even those kind of gimmicky things, that's all the game far falls into the game far category. You, you look as well, Nick, like something that happened over COVID was um, Formula One didn't have races. And so they launched a e-sports version of Formula One where it used to just be guys playing on their controls and whatnot. It went full nuts. They actually had Formula One drivers who would then drop in and race. They then had real races, um, these massive hosted events, top gear. And the Formula One teams now have signed on 21, 22 year old guys who at home six months ago were gamers, but because they're really good at playing this game, they are now test drivers what? in the sports sims for the real racing teams right. and they represent ferrari or mclaren in the esports world they earn a salary like in the last two years just the development in the formula one space which is normally on the cutting edge of technology has adopted and this this e-world of formula one racing is it's crazy who do you think are piloting the drones <laughs> gamers yeah, that's a scary thought. <laughs> like year like, so okay, like playing like what is it, flight simulator? Uh, okay. So it's 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 going, it's, it's going everywhere. The thing is, it creeps. It becomes like so part of the normal, but you don't realize it until you actually realize. My mom spent more time on the phone than I do, playing all those mm -hmm. Candy Crush words with friends. So it's still part of a game. And if you manage to let her understand that she can make money by playing these games. I can't even imagine like how the, the, the whole world would be would turn upside down. I mean, they're paying like real dollars to get like bonus shots and everything on, on those games. But um, yeah, I mean, GameFi is uh, it's going to disrupt. Metaverse is just part of it. Yeah. Yeah, I can't believe it. I, just, I can't feel it because uh, just because mm. I'm not it's it's not been part of my journey in life to be, become addicted to games or get too excited. Mm. I, yeah, but mm. I believe it. Um, it yeah, it, it's what's quite stunning is you, you look at, and I, I don't have the official numbers, so forgive me for the accuracy, but you look at some of these games that launch, you know, they'll have a, you know, whether it's a GTA 5 or the new Far Cry, and on game launch day, the numbers that they rack in are comparable to what a Hollywood blockbuster would generate over six months. And that's what they pull in a day. Um, and now considering a lot of these games are offering in-game purchasing, a lot of these games do. So you can buy the game, but if you want to advance, you either play 12 hours or you drop $500 and you buy a whole bunch of experience tokens in-game and then you can upgrade your character earlier. And I've done that. I'm like, oh, my God, I'm not playing this. I'll drop 500 Rand, buy the game credits, just to ramp up so that the game gets more fun. So it's, yeah, I, mean, I thoroughly enjoy my game still. Um, That's cool, yeah. Yeah. Not ever since I got a kid. Small sample sets, of course, <laughs> but yeah. Oh, what's we call it there, guys? Yeah. yeah. Very good chats.